Our next story may come as no surprise to younger millennials and members of Gen Z. Data from the Productivity Commission out this morning shows those born after 1990 are experiencing slower income growth. Here to unpack it all is Productivity Commission Chair Danielle Wood, who joins us from Adelaide. Danielle, welcome back to the program. Good morning. Hi, Lisa. Uh, there's lots of different angles you could pull out from this report. What kind of struck you most? Uh, look, I think actually there was some pretty good news in the report, so maybe we can start with, with that. Um, and it was really that if we look at people in their mid-40s today, so what we're calling the Xennials, the sort of Gen X millennial cusp, um, two-thirds of them have higher incomes than their parents at the same age. So they've certainly seen this sort of generation on generation progress in living standards. Uh, the other piece of good news for, for those middle-aged Australians is we've seen really high economic mobility. And, and what that means is um, how well their parents did, you know, whether their parents were low-income earners, middle-income earners, high-income earners, doesn't actually have much of a bearing on how well they've performed. Uh, and we're actually one of the most economically mobile countries in the world on, on that measure. So those are a couple of the, I think, positive news stories to come out of the report. So what you're saying is if you are a child of poverty, and that is what you've known, that that doesn't necessarily lock you into that life? Well, I mean, it's interesting that you should raise poverty. So what we find for most Australians, this is true. Um, we have a very sort of mobile middle class um, what we did find, though, the note of caution in that finding was um, at the extremes, you have much less mobility. So if you're born into a very high income family at the top 10%, you're more likely to stay high income. And the counter to that is if you're born into a, a poorer family in the bottom 10% of incomes, um, you're more likely to, to, to stay at a, a low income level. So that kind of idea of getting trapped in poverty, we do see some of that in the data, unfortunately. And what, what, how is this data useful? I think it's useful because what it does is tell us um, where some of the good news is and then where some of the challenges are. So if I'm looking at that as a policymaker, um, I would see that idea of being um, that we can see some people trapped in poverty in that cycle of disadvantage. It's really important then to think about policies that break those cycles. Um, but it also tells us that um, you know hard work and effort uh, can still play a role in, in the lives of most people and how they turn out. And in the report, it certainly makes mention of education being the key to that. That's right. So when we think about the key drivers of economic mobility, um, education is clearly one, and particularly educational opportunities for the most disadvantaged. So things like early learning and care, high quality school education, they're all going to be superchargers of economic mobility. Uh, the other thing that we know is really important uh, is the way the broader economy is performing and, and income growth in the broader economy. Um, so that is what has led to the fact that the people in the mid-40s have done better than their parents uh, because they've experienced several decades of healthy economic growth, which has allowed their incomes to grow. Uh, as you pointed out in your introduction, that is less true of those younger millennials, those born in the 1990s, because they've hit the workforce uh, in a period where, you know, Wage growth was pretty stagnant pre-COVID uh, and then post-COVID we've seen real incomes go backwards. So yeah. and just, um, really economic growth matters for, for living standards. And just before you go and on that in a way, because that's one of the things the federal government's trying to tackle with its Future Made in Australia Act. And I know very early on you were quite firm in your views, just making it clear that that the federal government may have an intention, but that you it was... Um, uh, I think you said you, you can't pretend that it's not going to be costless. Now that we're months down the track, have you altered your views in any way about the Future Made in Australia Act and the impact it might have or otherwise? I mean, when I was talking about the Future Made in Australia Act, I was being clear that there are costs, as you say, associated with these types of policy um, interventions. Uh, and we've continued to have... Uh, dialogue with the, the government around that. Uh, but the point about kind of boosting growth is much, much broader than, than any one piece of legislation. Um, you know, at the Productivity Commission, we obviously put out a whole suite of recommendations that go across the economy that look at ways 
in which um, we can improve growth and, and living standards and see the return to that generation on generation progress that has characterised Australia at least up until now. Danielle Wood, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me.